Hello, good day everyone, especially to you ma'am. We are group 4 from BSN 2A. So now we are going to discuss about the life of adolescence. So when we say adolescence, it is the period of transition between childhood and adulthood. It includes some big changes to the body and to the way a young person relates to the world. What is adolescence? Adolescence has many changes to their life. This includes physical, sexual, cognitive, social, and emotional changes. This can bring anticipation and anxiety for both children and to their families. Understanding what to expect at different stages can promote healthy development through, throughout adolescence and into early adulthood. There are three stages of adolescence. First is the early adolescence from 10 years old to 14 years old. Second is the middle adolescence from 15 years old to 17 years old. And lastly is the late adolescence ages from 18 to 24 years old. So during early adolescence, the both sexes experience the beginning stages of puberty. The male and female in this period experience significant physical growth and increased sexual interest. Although adolescents in this stage have limited interest in the future, they develop deeper moral thinking during the early adolescent stage. During the middle adolescent stage, puberty is completed for male and females. Physical growth slows for females but continues for males. During this stage, adolescents begin to set long-term goals and become interested in the meaning of life and moral reasoning. Adolescents in the late adolescence phase typically experience fewer physical developments and more cognitive developments. They gain the ability to think about the ideas rationally, delay gratification, plan for the future, and gain a firm sense of identity. During this period, young people also experience increased emotional stability and independence. Now, let's proceed to stormy phase. Stanley viewed adolescence as a period of inevitable turmoil that takes place during the transition from childhood to adulthood. Storm refers to a decreased level of self-control and stress refers to an increased level of sensitivity. Storm and st stress refers to the period of adolescence in which the teenagers are in conflict with their parents because they are moody and engage in risky behavior. But take note, not all adolescents go through a stormy phase, okay? Thank you. Next, the stormy phase includes the conflict with parents because adolescents tend to rebel against authority figures as they seek for greater independence and autonomy. Therefore, adolescence can certainly be a stressful time for parents. Diba? Are you agree? A stormy phase also includes mood disruption because of the hormonal changes and the psychological stress of adolescents, in which can cause and uncontrollable shifts in emotions. A stormy face or risky behavior. Risky behavior like drug and alcohol abuse, criminal behavior, dangerous driving practices, risky sexual behavior, or actions that are dangerous to teen or to others occur in this phase. On the other hand, it is more likely to occur in the late adolescence and may persist in the early 20s. So during adolescence, if mag-combine a neurological need for stimulation and emotional immaturity, this would lead to increased risk-taking behavior. 
Next is the physical development. Adolescence begins with puberty. So pag inasabi natin na puberty, there will be several physical changes occurring in our body. Such as a male's, um, the voice deepens, then the penis gets bigger, then for the girls, uh, the breast starts to develop, and then pubic hair. Then also during this time, primary and secondary sexual characteristics develop and mature. So, for primarily sexual characteristics um, like the uterus and ovaries in the females and testes in males, this help us reproduce. So, for the secondary sexual characteristics, um, dito na maka-experience ang girls na magmenstrual periods, usually around to 12 to 13 years old ang maka-experience nito. Then sa boys, uh, maka-experience na sila ng first ejaculation around 13 to 14 years old of age. Next, during puberty, both sexes experience a rapid increase in height. For girls, this begins between 8 and 13 years old, with adult height reach between 10 and 16 years old. Boys begin their growth spurt slightly later, usually between 10 and 16 years old, and reach their adult height between 13 and 17 years old. Both nurture and nurture medications and medical can influence height. For early maturing, boys tend to be stronger, taller, and more athletic than their later maturing peers. Uh, mas popular sila, confident, and independent. For the girls, um, they are overtly admired and which can cause them to feel self-conscious about their developing bodies. These girls are at a higher risk of depression and substance abuse and eating disorders. For late maturing, um, dito na yung higher risk for depression and conflict with parents and more likely to be bullied. Um, kilala din ito na late blooming boys and girls, which they develop more slowly than their peers. Uh, dito sila makafeel ng self-conscious about their lack of physical development. Cognitive development. So, this is the growth of child's ability to think and reason. Ages 12 to 18 is called adolescence. Mas nag ang mga kids and teens in this stage. This type of thinking is also known as a formal logical operations, which it includes do abstract thinking, reasoning from known principles, consider many points of view, and think about the process of the thinking. How cognitive growth happens during the teen years. From ages 12 to 18, children grow in the way they think. They move from concrete thinking to formal logical operation. It's important to note that each child moves ahead at their own rate in their ability to think in more complex ways. Each child develops their own view of the world. Some children may be able to use logical operations in schoolwork long before they can use them for personal problems. When emotional issues comes up, they can cause problems with the child's ability to think in complex ways. The ability to consider possibilities and facts may affect decision making. This can happen in either positive or negative ways. Thank you for that, Mika. Moving on, adolescence is the period of transition between childhood and adulthood. It includes some big changes to the body and to the way a young person relates to the world. So now, let's talk about the types of co cognitive growth through the years. So first, ad early adolescence. This is where things are either right or wrong, great or terrible, without much room in between. As part of this, preteens and early teens are often self-conscious about their appearance and feels as though they are always judged by their peers. Second, is the middle adolescence. In this phase, the brain continues to change and mature in this stage, but there are still many differences in how a normal adolescent thinks compared to an adult. Additionally, many adolescents have more arguments with their parents as they struggle for more independence. With that, they often question and analyze more extensively, also thinks about beginning a code of ethics in his or her own.
Lastly, is the late adolescence. Generally, on this phase have completed physical development and grown to their full adulthood height. They usually have more impulse control by now and may be better able to gauge risks and rewards accurately. Teens entering early adulthood have a stronger sense of their own individuality and can identify their own values as well as focus future and base decision on their hopes and ideals. In connection with, we have two perspectives on adolescent thinking. First perspective, which is based on the work of Piaget, which is the constructivist perspective. This is a view that hypothesizes adolescents' cognitive improvement is relatively sudden and drastic, meaning people actively construct or make their own knowledge and that reality is de determined by the experiences of the learner. Hence, the information processing is the second perspective that characterizes thinking as the environment providing input of data which is then transformed by our senses. Moreover, improvements in basic thinking abilities generally occur in five areas during adolescence. These are attention, which are in cognitive function, functions critical for optimizing sensory processing, memory, which is seen in working and long-term memory, in processing speed, Adolescents think more quickly than children. Organization. Adolescents are more aware of their own thought. And metacognition, which is adolescents can think about thinking itself. Additionally, metacognition is to put simply on thinking about one's thinking. More precisely, it refers to the processes used to plan, monitor, and assess one's understanding and performance, as well as it is relevant in social cognition and results in increased introspection. Being introspect resulting in two distinct problems in thinking, and these are the imaginary audience and the personal fable. On the other hand, Adolescents reach a certain stage of social perspective thinking, which they understand how the thoughts or actions of one person can influence those of another person. They are more likely to engage in relativistic thinking that is more likely to question others' assertion and less likely to accept information as absolute truth. And this can lead to a period of questioning authority in all domains. Lastly, wisdom or the capacity for insights and judgment that is developed through experiences and increases between the ages of 14 and 25 than levels of. Adolescents are more likely to take risks than adults, but both weigh the potential rewards and consequences of an action. However, adolescents seem to give more in onto rewards than social rewards on adults. Emotional Development the way a person thinks and feels about themselves and others, their inward thoughts, is key to their emotional development. So developing and demonstrating individual emotional assets such as resilience, self-esteem, and coping skill is heightened during adolescence because of the rapid changes being experienced. Social development and emotional development are closely intertwined as young people search for a sense of self and personal identity. Adolescent emotional development is often characterized by rapidly fluctuating emotion. So, Adolescents have mood swings and frequently change than temperament. They tend to have more intense and wide-ranging emotions than children or adults, and they exaggerate their problems as well. So, as you can see on the slide, emotionally, adolescents encounter many new experiences that challenge their ability to cope with a broad array of intense emotions. Youth must learn how to handle stressful situations that trigger powerful emotions without harming or hurting themselves or other people. Once youth have learned to identify their emotions and the source of their emotional reactions, they must then learn healthy ways to cope with situations that cause a strong emotional reactions. When this learning is completed, youth will have developed emotional efficacy, a landmark skill that enables them to be successful in their future careers and to enjoy meaningful relationships with others.
For you, what is emotional maturity? So, emotional maturity is the ability to handle situations without unnecessarily escalating them. Instead of seeking to blame someone else for their problems or behavior, emotionally mature people seek to fix the problem or behavior. They accept accountability for their actions. Emotionally mature people don't lie in uncomfortable situations. Rather, they face the reality of them head on. In a disagreement, they don't resort to personal attacks. They address the issue being discussed. They are not also impulsive and they don't speak recklessly. They make sure they are calm and think before they speak. There are two theories named Eric Erickson and James Marsha. They agreed that some youth will develop a clear set of values and beliefs through experimentation with different identities and an examination of their values, but other youth will not advance this far. So, in adolescent stress, have you ever heard the Storm and Stress in Adolescence by G. Stanley Hall? If not, according to him, storm refers to a decreased level of self-control and stress refers to an increased level of sensitivity. Hall's perception of adolescence continues to influence our view of this period of development. Also, developmental experts have since learned that what may appear as storm and stress is actually the natural outcome of youth learning to cope with a much larger array of new and unfamiliar situations. Now, we are in moral development. What comes in your mind when you hear the word morality? So, morality refers to the way people choose to live their lives according to a set of guidelines or principles that govern their decisions about right versus wrong and good versus evil. So, moral development. As youth's cognitive, emotional, social development continue to mature, their understanding of morality expands and their behavior becomes more closely aligned with their values and beliefs. Therefore, Moral development describes the evolution of these guiding principles and is demonstrated by the ability to apply these guidelines in their daily life. So, according to Colbert's theory, some youth will eventually their moral decision on a set of ethical principles that surpass existing law or rules other youth will remain in primarily concerned with rules, law, and fairness. Teens must make moral judgment on a daily basis. When children are younger, their family, culture, and religion greatly influence their moral decision-making. During their early adolescent period, peers have a much greater influence. Furthermore, the new ability to think abstractly enables you to recognize that rules are simply created by other people. As a result, teens begin to question the absolute authority of parents, school, government, and other traditional institutions. By late adolescence, most teens are less rebellious as they have begun to establish their own identity, their own belief system, and their own place in the world. There are also factors that affect moral development like trauma and social learning. So in trauma, traumatic experience can include physical, emotional, or sexual abuse, the death of a family member or close friend, witnessing senseless violence. So this type of experiences can cause them to view the world as unjust and unfair. In social learning, adolescents may have also 
observe the adults in their life making immoral decisions that disregarded the rights and welfare of others, leading this youth to develop beliefs and values that are contrary to the rest of society. So, lacking a moral compass, this youth may never reach their full potential and may find it difficult to form meaningful and rewarding relationship with others. Thus, while parents may find this process of moral development difficult or challenging, it is important to remember that this developmental step is essential to their children's well-being and ultimate success in life. Okay, next we have here uh, social development. So according to Eric Erickson, appropriate social development in adolescence requires solving the major challenge of ego identity versus uh, role diffusion. So in this uh, stage, uh, they will start uh, thinking uh, like, who am I? Uh, in Where they are conflicted with dozens of values and ideas of who they should be and what they should think. So socially, as youth a need for independence increases, their primary social support shifts away from their families and toward their peers. So because of that, youth are especially sensitive to peer pressure, so meaning to conform to the standards of the peer group. So by late adolescence, youth will ordinarily re-establish close relationship with their families and also other people outside their circle of family and friends. Example, bosses, coaches, teachers, co-workers, and other acquaintances. So in this uh, developmental phase, uh, romantic relationships begin to flourish. So in early adolescence, these connections may be of a more flirtatious nature and may bloom and fade rather quickly. However, by late adolescence, uh, many of these uh, relationships became more stable, mature, and emotionally intimate. So, social development to developmental task. Young people learn and grow within a social context. So, as we have uh, previously learned, uh, we are influenced by families, peers, communities, and societies. Although these systemic factors influence young people in different ways, there are sub-developmental tasks for young people that take place in a social arena. So these are developmental tasks can be broadly discussed in three categories. These are autonomy, intimacy, and identity. Developmental task autonomy. So during the early stages of adolescence, uh, young people tend to be narcissistic, seeing themselves and their perspectives as the most important, believing that others should think the same way. So this can uh, cause conflict with parents because they cannot see others' perspectives because we have different views. But young people became more willing to consider other points of view. Although they might not agree with other values, beliefs, or opinions, they are more accepting of differences and perspectives. So sometimes, uh, when uh, young people are trying to develop skills, independence, or autonomy, uh, they will experiment with new activities and seek exciting experiences. So the way in which they try to achieve this uh, varies greatly, uh, ranging from a gradual process where the parents begin to let go of their control to one where the young person continues to push the boundaries, uh, resulting in conflict between them and their parents. So next is uh, developmental task intimacy. As young people move away from their families, their peers become increasingly important and begin to replace the family during social and leisure activities outside the home environment. Like-minded peers tend to provide a sense of belonging and understanding as well as an avenue for experimentation. So there are two uh, primary developmental tasks the peer group facilitates uh, during adolescence. So these are development of personal identity, who am I, and establishing autonomy, discovering a sense of self and separation from the family. In achieving this task, uh, young people begin to think, behave, and model their physical appearance on their peers. 
So next, developmental task identity. So as young people learn about themselves through developing intimacy with others and through learning how to become independent, they inevitably begin to assess their values, beliefs, and identities. During adolescence, young people will often experiment with hairstyle, clothing, and attitudes and will begin to question bigger issues in their society. These are important developmental issues for young people as they begin to form their adult identities. So next is sexual development. As youth grow into adult bodies capable of sexual reproduction, their sexual interest is piqued just as they are becoming interested in forming adult like, like such as romantic relationships. This often spells a recipe for disaster in some parents' minds, but it need not be. With thoughtful planning, education parents can assist their teens to celebrate and embrace their sexuality while making wise decisions along the way. Sexual development was described as a complex merger of physical, cognitive, emotional, social, and moral development. During this time, youth solidify their gender identity as masculine, feminine, or transgender. Youth will also become aware of their social, sexual orientation, which refers to a pattern of attraction to others, not sexual behavior. Youth will begin to realize they are primarily attracted to the opposite gender, straight, the same gender, gay or lesbian, both genders, bisexual, or still uncertain or questioning. During early adolescence, most teens become curious about sex, but any sexual behavior is usually limited to masturbation. masturbation. However, by middle to late adolescence, many teens begin to experiment with various sexual behaviors via masturbation, partners, or both. The influence of parental and peer relationships as well as the broader culture shapes many aspects of adolescent development. Research shows there are four types of relationships that influence an adolescent, and these are parents, peers, community, and society. There are uh, certain characteristics of adolescent development that are more rooted in culture than in human biology or cognitive structures. Culture is learned and socially shared, and it affects all aspects of an individual's life. Social responsibilities, sexual expression, and belief system development, for instance, all likely to vary based on culture. Furthermore, many distinguishing characteristics of an individual such as dress, employment, recreation, and language are all products of culture. So next is the culture and societal influence on adolescence development and this is the peer relationship. Peer groups offer their members the opportunity to develop social skills. However, they can also be the source of negative influences such as peer pressure. And societal influences on adolescent development. Parental relationship is one of the cultural and societal influences on adolescent development. The parent-child relationship is when children go through puberty, there is often a significant increase in parent-child conflict. Parent-child relationships are among the most important relationships for adolescents. During adolescence, Parent-child relationships are taught to become more equal, interdependent, and reciprocal. Changes that occur with a temporary decrease in the quality of the relationship and an increase in conflict. Indeed, adolescents report that their parents are less supportive in early to middle adolescence and they gradually perceive their parents as less powerful and controlling over the course of adolescence. 
So to summarize everything information, there are five characteristics of adolescence that are generally applied to all adolescents, and these are biological growth and development, undefined status, increased decision making, increased pressures, and the search for self. The nutritional problems in adolescents include problems of overeating, consistently making poor food choices, resulting in obesity. Conversely, other adolescents develop problems with unhealthy and extremely restrictive dieting without meeting the minimum nutritional requirements necessary for healthy growth and development. The poor eating habits includes high consumption of junk foods, sugar and fats, large portion of sizes, and lack of variety. The related health problems includes the obesity, osteoporosis, diabetes, and heart disease. So here in the entire management, you can see here the red, yellow, and green color. The red color refers to eat rarely Yellow refers to eat judiciously or wisely, and the green refers to eat freely. There are some examples here that you can see, please be guided, and take note that good nutrition is an important part of leading a healthy lifestyle. Combined with physical activity and diet can help adolescents to reach and maintain a healthy weight. Reduce the risk of chronic diseases such as heart disease and cancer and also promote the overall health. That's all. Thank you.